Boop, boop, boop. All right, are we all red eye? I'm ready. I copy Tom. Lasser. Okay. <laughs> I'll take that thumbs up as a yes. I forgot I was muted. All right. Welcome, everybody, to Bears and Dragons. It's been two weeks. I now have AC. Yay. Hopefully it sticks around. And uh, this is where a bunch of us nerdy-ass bears sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. We play Dungeons and Dragons? Uh, thank you very much. And uh, we're picking up here uh, last time. Uh, do you remember what happened last time? I do you remember what happened last time. We got, we, got the, we got the Grand Tour of Bloom and Stone. We dropped off our item at the at the merchant. Made some deals. Got some uh, discounts for the party. Got a sweet little magic item. And I believe when we left off, the there was an encounter happening. An ooze. Came with it down from the ceiling. The deep nose around you, around you all draw weapons and retreat. As you see a guard stumble back and then rise up in the air, a, a strange shimmering around him reveals the surface of the gelatinous cube that has engulfed him. Ew. I need. Everybody to to oh wait a minute before we actually roll, you might want to 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 pop over to uh, uh, a map of this little area here. Yeah, this be nice. I basically cropped out like a normal portion and. Uh, it's a cube duo. That's a really shitty intro. Not bad. What what happened right before? What were we doing before the um, cubes attacked? Uh, you were selling stuff. Oh right, I, I remember. Cool things. We were, Look, we were finishing off with that merchant, and then weren't we getting ready to like leave? I had handed out everybody like a uh, the little discount card that I, I sweet talked to the guy to get into giving us all because he had like magical items and magic stuff. Where's one other person I knew? All right, so dong, 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 bells going off. Uh, some deep nose draw weapons, but you see, one of them is too late as he suddenly floats up into the air, rises up into the air, and goes, Whoop. and you, 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 it's hard to see, but you do notice some 
uh, shining, the shining surface of a transparent gelatinous cube. Does also, you like got a deep gnome inside the cube. Does it deep like gnome being, deep inside? Uh, being corroded or like <laughs> acided? I don't know how else to say sedated. It. Yeah, sure. Just slowly <laughs> dissolved. Uh, Does on he his... look savable? Uh, but he he is look. You can see his eyes moving and everything, and he he looks like he's reacting to the fact that he is currently engulfed. Okay. Uh, In other words, time. yes, he does look like he's still alive. Okay. Karad. Mm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> We're not rolling for our familiars, right? Yeah, I'll just say they go right after you. Okay. This is what, this is what we're going to do. What, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to need deck saves as I, as I do a fourth level fireball right in the middle of them. Oh, it's... Honestly, those seem like really good deck saves for Gelatinous Cube. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be centered right here in between them. Hmm. Oh, yeah, met him. So, I need to make a call about something. Funny. Oh no. Yeah, 31. Okay. I know what you're doing. <laughs> Alright, so this gelatinous cube takes 36 damage. Uh, 36. Uh, this gelatinous <clears throat> cube takes uh, 36 damage. And what's half of 36? 36, that would be, yeah, 18. Uh, so, the still alive guy inside one of them, uh, I'm going to say he takes uh -huh. half because the gelatinous cube kind of absorbs, kind of like it's blocking it. But... I had that feeling that would happen. He boils a little bit. <laughs> More than he already was. All right, yeah. anything else, Crad? Um, what do I have? One second. Hey, my eyes aren't blurry. The map is just blurry. The, right? the map is me taking a small image and blowing it up really large, so it's kind of blurry, but... As okay. long as you get the general idea of the features of the room. Yeah, I was just trying to make sure I wasn't going crazy or something. Nope, that's not you. Yeah, we'll go ahead they and make... use um, two uh, sorcery points to uh, quick and cast a uh, firebolt at the non... Uh, one that doesn't have the no minute. Okay, if you insist. That hits. So another 14 fire damage to it. And also, if these have resistance to fire damage, it is nulled. FYI. I will say this. They do not have resistance. I would just make sure people, like, I say it because I have elemental adept. Mm -hmm. So... That'd be all. Uh, and Miss Queenie. I'm guessing this is the one that has the... Mm -hmm. uh, person in it? Okay. Yeah, can't you see him? He's right here. Oh. I can't tell what that says. So. <laughs> I honestly well, don't. Uh, well, yeah, it, 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 it basically has the, the guy's name, but 
Nice foot, uh, foot napper. Okay. Like, I'm at like 70%, so like, I couldn't tell <laughs> until I zoomed in. Flint napper? Look, I don't name them. It's in the book, okay? Don't you name them, though? Don't you? Only if they're unnamed NPCs and you ask for their name. Then I'll give you a name and totally forget what it was. Yeah. Like Sally? What's her name again? Lordy. Uh, not like we'll meet her ever again. Leela? No. Right. Holly. It's Holly want to go and try to save the... Uh... Um, Nev. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Get up here. I don't know, does she want to stick her hand into that ew, gooey thing? I mean, it's kind of gross. Yeah, but she's better than everyone, so she would, like, want to prove it. Oh. Alright, we don't get that going on. Um... She's going to go ahead and rage. She is now raging. Going to go ahead and try to pull him out. All right. I would like her to make a strength check with advantage since... He is raging. Natural 20. Yeah, I think that pulls him out. <laughs> if that don't, I don't know what does. Uh, I would also like you to roll me 3d6. Ooh, nice. So, uh, uh, Holly, yanking this deep gnome out Takes uh, uh, six points of uh, acid damage. Three points of acid damage because she's a water genasi. Oh, resistance to acid. <laughs> Probably just goes, yes, Holly. <laughs> so I think I still have, so it's like right here, 30, yeah. Um, still holding on to him. Gonna go ahead and awesome. take. Go 10 feet back for my full movement. Yeah. Uh, I, think you, I think you can put me down now. Okay, cool. And then she will once uh, out of the range. Would Holly take orders from this? No. She don't want to deal with him no more. Okay. <laughs> Well, he didn't really order her. He just said you can. Like, he didn't... He said, I'm giving you an option to put me down. Like, hey, are we good? <laughs> and it's like, okay, thank you. <laughs> Alright, anything that's else? All. That's all. Gage is most protect. He's... I come up yeah, here. Light his Dawnbringer. I don't think. It uses a bonus action. Well, shit. Oh, I was able to do something. I keep forgetting about this thing. And he's just gonna stand right there. 
Um, on my turn, can I say I had I used my elemental essence shard for that firebolt? Sure. It it happens on their turn, so it's nothing like preempt like redo damage or anything. It's just. He goes out there uh, and readies in action to or to hit anything that comes within range. What can Mev do now that he's out? Hmm. You're like, uh, 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 well, uh, let's try this. And he pulls out a uh, the heavy crossbow from from his back. He he takes a couple steps back and shoots at the nearest. Yeah, that'll well, definitely hit. Zyra! <clears throat> well, since he already saved the NPC, I guess it's a great time to try out my new toy called Wall of Text. <laughs> what? <laughs> A.K.A. Think of his hand. hand! Um, I will like to, with my action, well, action cast, and then bonus action, I want to try and grasp and squeeze the cube in front of it. The one in front. So. Let me see something here. I need to see if I can find. Arg. Ah, here we go. This should work. Uh, this is probably good. There you go. So, so I have to roll. Uh, it's large size. Large size. And it's it's going to be squeezing this cube here. So I have to roll my sp uh, spell roll attack to see if I hit. And let's do just, well, this won't be the damage. It's just a roll to hit. With a 22 hit. Uh, yes. Okay, so now that I do that, it is, what, 48 force damage. 48. 22. And I believe I'm grappling it. So I'm squeezing it. Some way, shape, or form, and you off. just Long when you squeeze it, you just hear harder. <laughs> Sounds like someone's making macaroni and cheese. That's what good sounds like. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> so gross. Is 
So, oh, grasping. I believe hand, it's right. That's yeah, it grasping hand. Correct. Your hand attempts to grapple a huge or smaller creature within five feet. It uses the hand strength score to resolve the grapple. If the target is medium or smaller, uh, you have advantage on this check. While the hand is grappling the target, you can use a bonus action to have the hand crush it. So first, you need to grapple. You're using okay. grasping. So, so I will I will grapple with them. So we need the hand's strength score. Which is a twenty-six. Oh, plus eight. Yeah, so, uh, so it's like it was a twenty-one if we use your spell because that's a plus nine. So I can just crack one from that. So we can use that. So that's probably going to beat it. Going to be beating any sort of gelatinous cube strength. Uh, yep. Yeah, that, that beats it. Uh, All right. They so roll pretty well. Next. Yeah. Okay, so next turn I will squeeze it then. Uh, All right, so that's it. I mean, it says while the hand is grappling the target, you can use a bonus action to have the hand crush it. So if you want the, to crush it with your bonus action this turn. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So just the same rolls that are already up there. Uh, 2d6. Do, do it again. Is it, okay, did you do this at a higher level? No. 2d6 plus your spellcasting ability modifier for your grasping hand. Okay, 2d6. Roll. Yeah, 48 with for clenched fist if you just wanted to hit it. Just... Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so... 2d6 plus my modifier, which is a 9. There we go. That's much better than if I just took the extra go. rolls on the on the last one. Right. So I'm making some some good mac and cheese. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I believe grapple speed reduced to zero, right? Correct. So, despite the fact that a gelatinous cube doesn't really move very quickly, anyways, it, it, it no move now. All right. Speaking of which, Gelatinous cube, cube tries to twenty AC. Okay. Gelatinous cube is trying, gonna try to smack the uh, hand that's holding it. Oh, engulf yeah, the hand. That wrong. Uh, because it's kind of like an arcane hand, probably. Uh, nope, HC that doesn't of 20. 20, so, no. It misses. Uh, meanwhile, we have another one who's... Going to kind of move into the water here. Okay, that's it. That's all it's going to do. Blaster! Uh... Am I correct to assume that we can no longer see this one? No, these pools aren't very deep, so it's like maybe dropped a little bit in height, but okay. We can still see about then one up of it. This might fail. I'm not sure yet. Um, I'm gonna cast Witch Bolt with my one of my packed uh, thingies. Okay. Um, with uh, to the one that's in the water, I assume. Okay. Cool. Um, which bolt? Cool. Eighteen. Uh, I might have rolled wrong. No, six damage. Lightning damage. Cool. Anything else? Uh, I think that's that all I can do. Um, I am going to move, however. Um, 5, 10, 15, 20. Hey, Karad. 
Oh wait, what is my range for Witch Bolt? 30 feet. This one takes uh, 11 fire damage. Oh, thank you. Never mind, I don't move that far. I don't think I move at all. There we go. <laughs> and that is my turn. Cool. Grab back to you. All right, you just see him like touch out his fingers and like kind of blow in his fingers, and then like five spouts of fire, like oh. little things like <laughs> fire, come out. Slam his hand down and casting with a gas uh, web of fire, all towards. All five of them towards this one. Mm. So I need another deck save. What's the DC? 17. Okay. No, I got a negative one. Oh, oh, oh baby. Uh, okay, so... This is five different things, right? Well, well it's either five targets or one, and the one target does oh, 12. Five or one? Yeah. I can either set, have it do five, like five flames go out towards five targets or one target. That's why I was trying to look at it, make sure it's like if multiple ones. It doesn't really say if like I do two flames if it's both eight d six. Let me quickly uh, here. There you go. The way it words. <laughs> around the cast area. Five streaks of fire rapidly snake along the ground towards up to five enemies. Five. So you you have five streaks mm -hmm. essentially. Because then like have because it's like yeah I have five streaks and if I can do up to five targets. Alternately all five streaks of fire can instead converge towards a single target deemed dealing 12 d6. See, that's where... So the math is weird. Yeah. Because it's essentially a fourth of the damage if all five hit converge if considering each is individual one is 8d6. Or... No, that's not four. All right, I'm going to strike a bargain with you. Eight, sixteen, twenty-four. Uh, I, I'm going to strike a bargain with you, just because I think this would probably end up being overkill if you did all five to to that one. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you a chance. Bye. Okay, so here, here's here's the thing: is I'm going to modify this for my own sake. Each bolt does 2d6 of fire damage. However, if you converge them on one target, it does an extra d6 of fire damage. Oh, so 11d6. So it'd be, or, or it'd be an additional 2, I should say. Okay. Uh, so basically, the 12d6, or when it converges two. to 1, it's like it's a bonus uh, of mm -hmm. 2 ad additional d6. Because it's saying, like, because it's like eight. It, I think that it could also. I also feel yeah. like say saying like eight d six of fire damage. Um, the way that I'm reading it is that you can either send one to a uh, hit one person and the other to hit other people. However, if you want you can send all five to that one person. Right, right, right. That, you... that, that's, that's, that's true. It's just the math is weird because of the each... way that it's listing the damage die. Yeah. Because all it says for for each target must make a dexterity saving throw, make an 8d6 fire damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. Alternately, all, all streaks of fire can instead converge on a single target. So... You could say that 
but it's like it feels like each of those streaks must do a certain amount of damage. Like if you put it together, it gets weaker because it's like each one is doing eight d six, but putting it together is doing less damage separately than all five. Because at all five, that's forty d six. The way that it's worded, I feel like it's like one or all. Yeah, but it's also up to five enemies. So you don't need up to five enemies, but if you do like, if there's five streaks and you only do two enemies and you do two on one and two on another, um, do they each get 8d6? Doesn't make sense. This is a homebrew spell that we found. Yeah, it, well, yeah. So, this is this is based off of Wittigas Web of Fire from from Critical Role. It's just yeah, yeah. no one knows all the specifics on how that actually works. Um, so we have to. So so my my ruling here to give you an option is uh, each streak is two d six, but if you target one, it ends up being twelve d six. Does that make sense? That makes more sense. Yeah. Because it would be, yeah, it's, yeah, that that seems more amped to it, so. Because I, I basically bumped up that 8d6 to 10d6, if you do individual streaks, total damage. Uh, and then, if you just converge, you get an additional two different dies, basically kind of how I'm, how I'm rolling it. So, yeah. if you would like to, what you can do is roll like sets of 2d6 and if that one dies i'll allow you to move the streaks to the other guy okay that works so so 11 fire damage it's still up we'll do do this um okay so make that 16. You're going to put the 5 from my subclass onto this onto this target. Okay. So that way it's just... A... Mm. So another 2d6. And it's dead. Okay. So you can do... So at this point you can just uh, throw the remaining... Is it 3? Uh, 66? Yeah. Uh, 28. The really funny thing here is that you rolled exactly the amount of health it had left. <laughs> yeah, I love Fire El- Elemental Adept. Because that one became a two. Yeah, it's, uh... <laughs> I mean, as is, is rolled, the 27 is the amount of health that was on there. Oh, really? Do 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 do. Take that spell slot out. Do 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 do. So the the cubes, after being blasted with streaks of fire coming coming from out of the ground, like Cora had sent sent out, the cubes kind of dissolve and kind of like out onto the ground. Uh, you can see, see a little bit of change, and it looks like a nice uh, short sword is amongst uh, the items of one of the cubes. Doesn't a nice like short sword. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's worn at all. How much? Um, I'll go ahead and pick up the coins. Yeah, it was 12 gold pieces. Uh, I guess I will collect the sword to identify it later. Yeah. Yeah, it looks very drowish. And just for fun, I I can't control the hand, but I'll float it over to the NPC and just kind of like dust him off like little ashes he has on him. (laughs) 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 This giant ethereal hand just... (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, it's basically like Bigby's. It, it, it's basically acting kind of like you know, what you might do with a mage hand, yeah. except much larger. <laughs> it, 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 it mimics like, my hand, hand movement, so it's just like. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, oh, I'm oh, just. Oh, oh, well, thank you there. Uh, we appreciate that that, that so much. Uh, man, these these oozes have been just causing a whole bunch of trouble lately. No. I'll press the dictate the rest of the dust and stuff off them. <laughs> no, it's more of go. like more of like acidic goo. Yeah, they uh, I can't believe this is, there's been another incursion. This has been happening quite recently. Uh, what are you adventurers doing all here? Some of you don't look like you really normally are down here. What are you doing? Jim Jars with you and says, oh, hey, hey, uh, just some of my friends picked up. Don't uh, worry about them. Hey, but what's up with the oozes? I, the last time I was here, uh, there wasn't anything about, about no oozes. It says, oh, yeah. Um, see, seems like uh, in every case, it seems like the oozes the oozes are trying to make it towards uh, the northwest section of the city. Northeast. Northwest. Northwest. I know my directions. Hold on. Let me get back to the actual map. Linden Stone. Is there anything that might be attracting them in that direction? Okay. Just, just, just so you're aware. North is to the right. So just think of like, if north normally is the top, just turn everything clockwise. Okay. You're so they would be going in this direction. I'm sorry, like in this direction. Mm -hmm. Have y'all, you know, figured out what they might be attracted to or something? Or has it all been the same area? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's been happening here. It's been happening in other parts. But uh, they all seem to be going in that direction. Could we maybe check that place out? Uh, we've been pretty busy with some other things that, that we've just been kind of like, you know, making sure we're all settled here. Uh, you have to realize we, well, it, we haven't really been back here for that much, that long. I mean, we've had a lot of dealing with the fortifications first, but uh, some of the dealings here has been, been a little bit of a problem. Sounds like you need a favor. I mean, if you're willing to help, then that, that's great. I'm always down with burning some oozes. Well, you mentioned an incursion, and since we did find some sort of sword of drow make, is that could they be the cause? Uh, honestly, I don't know. I mean, they were the ones who were here who were here originally intact. This may have been the leftovers from the original raising of the city. Hmm. Can, I, can I have everybody make me a charisma check? You said check? Check. Crad, you did a save. Oh. I need to check. Even better. <laughs> Not for Holly.
Hey, Gabe and I are charisma buddies. This is one You got that dang Final Fantasy song in my head now. All right. Alright, uh, we, we we thank you for all your help. Uh, we do do severely appreciate it. Well, I mean, we're we've heard about some things happening in town. Something something about a Medusa running around here too. A Medusa? Not that I personally have heard. Insight? Huh. Yeah, like I remember hearing something about a Medusa somewhere around here. I'm sorry, did you say sure something? I feel like we're waiting for something. Yeah. Oh, whoops. Sorry. Trying to remember where... It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. I totally forgot where you even heard about a Medusa. That's okay. Yeah, okay. I heard something about a Medusa, like, somewhere in town. It's all right. Never mind. <laughs> Move along. <laughs> I, 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 I believe you. I was just trying to figure out where I might have referenced the Medusa. Not oh, to okay. say there isn't a Medusa. Just saying. I don't remember where you <laughs> There is one now. <laughs> Oh, well, I guess, uh, have there been any other incidents in town other than the ooze attacks? Uh, not, not necessarily. Um, I mean, I've, I've heard some things. I mean, there's been some ghosts, but, uh, you know. Some of it just were like people that were here before, so well, who aren't really that big of a deal. Um, probably not not a good idea necessarily to to deal with them. But uh, there are some ghosts, but that's okay. But some are good, some are bad. Um, I heard some about we're rats. Um, I mean, we have our ooze problem. Uh, elementals. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of different things happening. I mean, I don't know all the details. I'm just guard here. Right now, here, it's like the occasional lose. I couldn't believe I was right there and just kind of like crept up on me. Although those things are hard to see. They're like completely transparent. Well, it's too late. You're here to help you. I'm sorry? So luckily, luckily, we're here to help. Ooh, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, as long as uh, you know we can uh, get a 
passage home safely? I mean, I, I can't really help you out with that. But I don't know if you... Uh, maybe if you, you help free some people up uh, um, by doing some good deeds here. I mean, maybe. We don't normally have outsiders here, but you seem to be good, like good people. And so it's like, yeah, whatever. But um, kind of been different about it. Um, but I, I mean, I'm, I'm not a tour guide or anything. I just kind of came along on the expedition as a guard. So I'm just like here. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I couldn't tell you the way back. But I'm sure if you do some good here, you might be rewarded with uh, some help getting back up to the surface. Uh, can we? Can you tell us or show us the way to uh, get to that area of this place? What area are you looking for? Uh, you said the cubes were uh, seemed like they were heading northwest. Yeah. Uh, it's an abandoned part of the, the the city. Nobody's been in there for a long time. Yeah. Uh, is there a specific way to get there, or should we just trust our guts on how to get there? I mean, there is that gate there. All right, let's go. Unless y'all have something else to do. No, I heard just... Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll identify that sword later. We, we can take the time out if you want. Yeah. Sure. Take ten minutes, identify. Cool. It's plus one short or uh, draw make. Okay. Would uh, anyone like to use it? Oh, say it again? Plus one short sword. Of draw make. Um, let's see. I'll take it. All yours. The simple weapon. I believe so. Plus one long sword, right? Mm -hmm. Short sword. Short sword. Of course, I, heard, I knew that. Yeah, I'll take it. Thanks. Yeah, that's a short bow, but... Well, let's make our way there and see if we can find some some clues to why these oozes are making their way into town. Um, so, uh, I, I, that I, I do want to add on to the, the to the short swords of Drow Make we need as a Drow Craft item. So, yeah, I, I would assume that with Identify, you would recognize that like. If the sword was exposed to sunlight for one hour without interruption, it would lose all of its magic and would just become a regular short sword. So, do I know that? I can tell you that. Okay. I'd like when to I know that, it. if possible. <laughs> well, especially if we're hoping to get up to the surface soon. <laughs> I mean, if you don't tell me, then I i guess I don't I'm know. A, I'm telling you. So, yeah, I wouldn't know I mean, what to identify. If anything, it's, the only difference is between, between before and after with this would be you get a plus one hit to your hit and, and damage. Or if it's exposed to light for, for sunlight for an hour and erupted, it would end up just being a regular short sword, which is just you lose plus one to your 
tangent. Oh. Oh, it's drone. It's terribly different. Anyway. Let's make our I way downtown. Noted it. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Well, during that uh, 10 minute break, could I had uh, played like some type of card game with uh, what's his name? I'm sorry. Um, Jim Jar? Sure. Cool. Uh, uh, luck, luck rolls or something? Oh, I don't care what type of game it was. Yeah, that's fine. I just need to pull up a uh, sheet in it. Goldfish. I'm playing cards. Baby. Skull. Right. I don't know. And I'll yeah. bet him one gold. Hold on. All right, are you a profession in playing cards? I doubt it. Uh, no, I'm proficient in dice set. Okay. But you're playing a card game, right? Yeah. I mean, if he has cards, then yeah, we can play. If not, all right. He, well, he has, he he definitely keeps a set of uh, playing cards on. Uh, so I want you to make me a wisdom check. Got to be uh, nineteen. Nah. All right. So he gets a gold off you. Cool. Some circles on me. Somehow. I don't even know what game we were playing. <laughs> and that's it. Let's go. Hmm? Try to do I'm ready. Up. Yeah, I just said uh, you guys played a quick game. That's what you played. Yeah. yeah. We were playing war. It was over before I knew it. All right. Where were we? All right. So what else, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Um, You've sold stuff. You, you got some stuff. You uh, killed a couple of gelatinous cubes. Uh, she said northwest. Yeah, go go investigate where these oozes were supposedly coming from. All right, I gotta... Uh, did we determine that this thing was like the thing that sends us back to upper world? I don't know what to call it. The surface. surface. Said it a couple times already today. Uh, so, want to go here? Sure, go ahead. You want me to take control of Jim Jar? Yeah. It's all you. You're in control okay. today. <laughs> We'll just go on over. Uh, not that far. <laughs> you gotta okay. follow the halls. All right. So where are we going? Going in here? Yeah. Through, through the I, I guess. All right. <clears throat> Walls of this no. great, great ca cavern are covered in slime. Dripping, sickening green slime. Echoes of dripping water also fill the cave, in the center of which is a large spherical structure 
is held up off the floor by stone pillars. Around these pillars crawl dozens of living oozes heaving forward while reaching out with grasping, with grasping pseudopods. The surf sphere surface, like the cave's walls, is covered with slime. Black slime swirls with yellow and gray slime in a disgusting soup. The unearthly patterns and the movements of the slime straining your eyes and tugging at your mind. This embodied voice fills the cave. What's this? What's this? Visit us now. Not yet. We're not ready. Go away, Pass. I will call upon thee and all of Blingdon Zone to announce our glad tidings of the faceless lord to come at the proper time. Be gone. Uh, uh, the faceless lord. A religion check, perhaps? Yeah, me too. If that's a thing. Jesus. Yeah. I know all religions. <laughs> I know nothing. Unless it was a really low roll. All right, so Lassiter, you have no idea what this faceless lord might be. Uh, Syra, though, um, Syra, uh, name comes to mind, uh, Dweeblix. No way. An arc demon? I have just uh, made it visible for you as a handout. Just you. Just me. Let's just say this. It falls under the category of demon. Word. Because darkness... Inventory NPC handout. Handout. No. Oh, here, I'll just show it to everybody. Ew. Yeah, you recognize that uh, this is a bubbly, a true horror. Dweeblex is a mass of bubbling slime. And he is a demon lord with slimy news. Are we are we supposed to see something? Here's, uh, just a handout. It showed to players, so you should be seeing. He's oh. ugly. I see nothing. I see our map. Uh, you can also check your uh, journal. Could be listening. Uh, Black Bear. It's on. Un it's under Demon Lords. Player art handout, and then Demon Lords. All I have is Demigorgon and Zictobi. Oh. Okay. Here, let me change, uh -huh. let me change this. Let's go to everyone here. There. Yeah. Now you can see it. Yes. And it's clear that the voice is coming from this thing? No. This is oh, what it was. was like, oh, Dweeblix. 
Okay. Hey, this is like another demon lord. We keep hearing things about these. <laughs> and could I tell where from where the voice was coming from? Uh, nope. Seems to kind of be echoing throughout the cavern. We no harm. We're just trying to, you know, pass <laughs> by. She'll whisper to you, like, he's talking about one of the demon lords. Like, like, like an oozy, like a demon lord of, like, the ooze. That can't be good. Well, no or... wonder there's... There's been attacks with, with, with gelatinous cubes. Maybe we should take this guy out? I whisper, not out loud. Well, I can't tell where the voice is coming from. It's somewhere around us. Hey, friend, how about, you know, if you come out, we can um make friends and stuff. Oh, we're just trying to get through here. There was a problem back at camp, and we're just trying to inspect what's causing it. Holy hell. What are those? This is technically more for illustrious or uh, illustrious uh, to illustrate the point. To illustrate the point? Yeah. Uh, They're surrounding us with ooze. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fireball. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is this are these things alive? Because remember, he said we entered the cavern or this this area, and there's just like oozes covering all the walls and everything. Yeah, I I know that there's slime, but are these sentient slimes? Uh, well, so give me a perception check. I said that there's like pseudopods grasping out at things, so I would imagine yes. You said perception, yeah. right? Yep. Okay, so you see a great cavern covered in slime, dripping, sickening green slime, echoes of dripping water also fill the cave, in the center of which is a large spherical structure which is held up off the floor by stone pillars. Around these pillars crawl dozens of living oozes heaving forward while reaching out with grasping pseudopods. The sphere's surface, and like the cave walls, walls is covered with slime. Black slime swirls with yellow and gray slime. In a disgusting soup. All I heard, all I needed to know is that these things are alive. I, hey guys, these guys are alive. We're leaving. <laughs> Just go back. Can we go back? Jim Jar, have you ever seen anything like this? Uh, nope. This is new. I mean, I've been gone for a while. Red, I mean, is this a normal thing down here? <laughs> I, I, not that I'm aware of. They, I wasn't. You, did you see a bunch of ooze over in Grickle's Soup? No, that hey. looks like mayonnaise, <laughs> peanut butter, or both put into one little jar. Ew. Okay. The the real question is: Is it is it smooth or chunky? Lump, Does it have lumpy in it? It's not chunky. It's lumpy. Mm. Okay. Um. 
do y'all want to head back or like uh, find a yeah. Way? <laughs> yeah, let's find a way I'm around not, this. Yeah. I'm not. Um, so we couldn't tell where the voice was coming from, just to humor me. Right. Cast. Uh, I want to cast see invisibility. See if there's something hiding that I can possibly see. You cast see invisibility, and you see a cavern full of voozes. And a big okay. sphere in the center. Well, darn. I can, see in, I can see into the ethereal plane, so I don't know if that was something... It would reveal some, reveal whatever's talking to us. Oh, there are there are, are the occasional gelatinous cube that's in amongst these things. By the way, just to let you know, just to give us more reason to head back. Maybe, maybe it just gives you a better better uh, view of uh, the gelatinous cubes, which are quite transparent. Oh. You actually see some of the the other oozes, kind of like. Slicking and sliding off of these cubed features. Because the other oozes aren't cubes. They're just ooze. <laughs> They're pudding uh, ooze gel uh, jellies. But a gelatinous cube is literally a cube. It has corners. So as we're heading back, I'm going to yell out, uh, all right. Friend, we're we're gonna head out, um, but we will be back to have your hand as a friend. Be gone. Yep. So, uh, new way. Let's go. We need to, we need to find whoever's in charge here and tell them about this immediately. That no wonder. Like Idea. No wonder they've had attacks. They're under siege from a from a demon lord. And by the way, this is the third demon lord we've had mentioned down here. Maybe that's an issue. Jim Jar, what is who runs this place? Uh, you met them. Well, let's let's get back there immediately. Those the digger medics are, are currently in charge. Are you sure? Maybe this isn't really our business. We kind of just want to get back up, you know. I mean, up to, up to you. I mean, it, right now, it seems like right now they're all like hanging out there. We're currently dealing with other issues, so. Uh, as of right now, might not be high priority. Might be other things that we're looking for. Or hopefully, they just hold up there. Because apparently, it's just the occasional uh, gelatinous cube. We're just not going to that direction. The forbidden pathway. I need a. Really, we need to refresh my vibrator, so we're going to take a quick break. And we'll come back and uh, figure out what's next. Okay. Quick break. Like two minutes. Quickly. Oh. Oh, no. Okay, then near full two minutes, so just need to refresh my brain. Everybody here, right? Am I missing anybody? I'm here. Okay, cool. All right. Now that I can wet my whistle.
What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Hey, boo boo. Uh, there is kind of a rock slide over here. It's another another way. Uh, you kind of came through, kind of in this area originally. I'm still in favor of at least informing the the town of this issue. Even if we're not going to do anything about it right now, at least let them know that, hey, <laughs> you have a demon lord problem. Release a severe ooze infection. You have some pustules. <laughs> All right, what do you say? I mean, you didn't see a demon lord. You just had somebody talk about uh, the faceless. <laughs> So we might have a demon lord problem here, or at least they might have a problem here. Uh, Cyrus saying that we should probably uh, warn them, and the other option is to just go do what we need to do to get home. Well... Definitely need to warn someone about what's this, because they've been having an ooze problem, and here's where the ooze problems come from. So we should let them know what's going on. But I'm not necessarily saying we have to do it right this moment. While we figure out, well, weren't we going to figure out the ooze problem? Here it is. Oh, crap. Yeah. Then, yeah, let's go. Take oh. us to your leader, Jupix, or <laughs> Jupix, Jim Jar. Mm. <laughs> um, which way we were were we going? I'm letting Jim Jar take us back to where, to his uh to his leader, or to the leader of the town. All right. Uh, I'm going to speed you guys there. Okay. So, so you come I back here. I have no idea what we're going. The guards were like, look, what do you want? They're kind of blocking did you, your way. Did you, you not hear about... Did you not hear about the... Whoa, that was... That's interesting. <laughs> what? I you're accidentally I, I, re I know. I, I reset my page because I, I killed my journal by accident. My and it took me to like my Saturday game. I was like, whoa, what what Oops. Yeah, that was weird. Like it cut to this other area. I'm like, what are these character tokens? Like, that's not us. What the hell? Okay, that was weird. You woke up. <laughs> this is like whoa. Anyway, um, Cyrus suddenly it appears as a completely different character in a completely different reality for for a brief moment, and suddenly shot back, and she kind of like stops in her tracks. This is how everybody else sees her. And she stops there and maybe says something that wherever she was, she would normally say. And yeah. then she suddenly turned into a giant minotaur with eight intelligence and eight wisdom. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> she's back to herself. <laughs> what the hell was that? You okay. You seemed a bit confused. Just we love a him, though. Oh, suddenly a hairy beast. For for a moment there, there was a, a, a big minotaur man next to Karad and Laster. <laughs> what happened to you? Got a, Karad got aroused. Was that necessary? Oh, anyway. Did you hear about the the recent gelatinous cube attack? Uh, that happens on occasion. We're assuming it's well, in another part of the city that we haven't been yet to ready to to uh, 
uh, actually start habitating yet. We well, know we we're going to have to clear exactly. out of two places. Well, there's one place in particular. There's hundreds, if not more. And they, they, they mentioned the... Right now? Well, at the moment, no, but they mentioned the coming of their demon lord, Jublex. Did they actually say this Dweeblex or whatever it is? No, sorry, well, listen, these guys clearly don't care. We might as well just head along. See well, how they're outsiders, so what, do you think we're going to take all your word for it? Exactly. Let's go. Let's uh, go find something else to do. You can say that their attitude to you right now is indifferent. They're like, yeah, you're here, whatever. Oh. Previously, they were like a little more suspicious of you. Now they're like, yeah. No. All right, then. As she turns away, she's like, well, don't say I didn't warn you guys. And still, walk away. Do we know of anything else to do here to, like, earn favor? Were are these guys setting up, like, uh, their food stuff? Where is their, their kitchen? The equivalent of a what are these, those places called bar or whatever tavern. Yeah, that one. Oh shit! There is an inn. Okay, so I There's think I inn? said before you guys you guys were here. Well, actually, the inn is over here. Oh. It is called the Foaming Muck. I thought this place was just a whole bunch of tunnels. <laughs> it is a bunch of tunnels. Oh, is the twice is a bunch of tunnels? <laughs> is the tavern the built game. in? Is the tavern built in into the tunnel? How many times do we have to say this? We're underground, so everything is gonna be tunnels. <laughs> I I know tunnels. tunnels and tunnels, <laughs> but there has to be like. Buildings, right? Maybe. Yeah, in cav in big tunnels, you can have <laughs> smaller buildings, but it's still gonna be in a tunnel. Okay. All right. So the the let's go into the top. Yo, dog! I put tunnels in your tunnels. <laughs> put a so dog, quick. <laughs> So there is a tap room and an inn, which currently is pretty much empty because they don't really have any outsiders, but the bed beds are comfortable. Uh, they can hold medium-sized guests. Uh, there, there are two separate hot springs used for bathing relaxation. And there's no other guests currently, so, you, uh, you, so you're staying here and have the inn to yourself. Oh, did we pick up our... However, the tap room is frequented by uh, deep gnomes after work. Keeping the place lively. Could we had picked up our teammates while we were over here? Yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, This is Recon. We were actually shown to the foamy mug for Earth. habitation. Not for... Not, not to here. Sorry, I reckon. Um, I'm just gonna put like a little orcad right here. So okay. just to mark where the inn is. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna forget at least. <clears throat> um okay, so uh I'm I'm assuming that there's someone to talk to at the yeah. counter if there's a counter. <laughs> That's another way to mark it. It is number sixteen. Oh. Um, are they speaking common or the or 
other languages. For the sake of ease, please be calling. Okay. If not, I was going to comprehend language. But... Okay. Uh, perception to see if I can pick up on it on something. Interesting. Sure. Perception. Buddy, this is how an underground city can look. Uh, they are currently, uh, by the way, they are currently serving Dark Lake Stout. No, I've never seen anything like this. Which is a Duragar beer. Okay. That looks wonderful. Well, that's pretty. Yeah. But see, it's still underground. It's a big, it's big tunnel pretty <laughs> much. Didn't Lord of the Rings have like a underground city or whatever? Moria. There's more ruins. Oh no! Well, the dwarven uh, sit uh, the dwarven um, towns and stuff were under mountains. Yeah, they dug too greedily and too deep. What about those goblinoids? Yeah, that had taken over Moria. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know their location names. And know what they look like. Or I have walked. When or visited them. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so. So you guys want to come some... back and kind of like hang out. And then when, when all of a sudden this. The, the uh, primetime rush. Of uh, deep gnomes come in. And they start getting kind of rowdy. Well. Please I figure we haven't. I figured we haven't sat down to eat or drink anything for a while, so get the group together, relax, get something in our bellies. Eavesdrop on some people. Right. I mean, did you want to carouse? Did you want to socialize? Uh, I'll uh, ask for food for the bar um, from the bartender person. I don't know what he's called. What's his name? Uh, a tappy foam strap. Can can I have that in um, text form? Sure. Tappy foam strap. Yeah, when you arrived, it was the most exciting thing that has happened in months. He peppers you with questions about your lives and adventures, puts you free drinks and food on you. Uh, hey, foam strap. Can I call you foam? Uh, or strap. You can you can call me Tappy, darling. Tappy, okay. Tappy is my uh, first name. What's good here? Well, right now we only have the Dark Lake style. We get it from uh, uh, Mental Dareth. Uh, me and we don't really life. have our own house beer yet. We we're kind of just setting up. Me and my friends here, we we are uh, wandering travelers, and we're just uh, you no know, trying to find something to help with. Any leads? Well, I don't know. I just run this place. It's, if you stick around, you might be able to. If you talk to some of the some of the people that come in after after work, you might be able to get something out of them. Uh, no? Since we're talking, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Did, were you going to say something? No, I was just, just going to agree. Like, sounds like a sounds like a good idea. Right now, we have uh, no leads and no way to get up to the surface yet. So, while we're talking, uh, by any chance, do you offer any deals to like people who help around? Maybe we can get a discount on food and drinks. I mean, I'm already giving you free free drinks and food. Just tell me about your adventures. Okay. Cool. Uh, 
uh, Karad here, my friend, fire guy. He's a uh, pretty good at conversation. How about you? How about you ask him about our adventure? I just walk off. Okay, so just to kind of make this a little bit easier, we got a perception. So, Syra, you're going to be just trying to uh, eavesdrop, right? Yeah, just listen in, see what people are talking about. Okay. Lasser, are you going to try to carouse with the uh, patrons? Sure. All right. Is my chat or something? I want you to roll me a yeah, just a charisma check. Grad, what are you doing? I'm talking to uh, to Tappy while messaging to Lasser saying you're a bitch. You'll thank me later, bud. No, I won't. Go find a dog. <laughs> You're just trying to, to to like stay away from the crowd. So, it's, are are you one of those people that, uh, well, kind of relatively charismatic? You're also one that just like shies away from people. Yeah. Or he has a force of personality, just uh, not much into the actual like talkative nature. Once you get me going, you can't shut me up, but. Like getting going part it's hard uh she does talk with you about like if you start mentioning stuff about like uh, uh your cooking uh she starts talking about recipes yeah I, I figured at one point it would lead to cooking since that's one of my specialties uh she might even suggest uh you're not really doing anything uh Maybe you can make one of your specialties. And maybe we can sell it and make some money. Fine by me. Let's go. Hey, if this adventure yeah. thing doesn't work out for you, um, um, maybe I can hire you on. I am looking for... Once they go to the surface, I am looking for employment. This... Uh, sir, this might be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Yeah. All right. So, uh, I would like... Do, 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 do. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, Lasser, roll me a e6. Actually, in Cyra, roll me a d6. d6. Sarah, you over, over here, uh, uh, people are divided as to what to do about the were-rats living in the southwest caverns. Some want them out, while others propose an alliance to mutual defense.
We will make our way towards those ta those tables. Excuse me. Um, I couldn't help but overhear about about your wear rat issues. Uh, yeah, it's a group of old wear rats up in the southwest. Have they been attacking people? Uh, not really. They kind of just like hold their little plates. They're kind of like squatting. Have they built like a, a small community within that area? Yeah, as far as we can tell. I mean, we don't really go out there that much. Hmm. And I heard something about helping them for the, with the uh, mutual defense of the city against the drow? Well, uh, not necessarily just the drow. I mean, haven't you heard some of the other things that have been happening? Oh, we've seen some of the other things happening too, but no one seems too interested just yet. Yeah, I mean, like, where rats don't really... We just kind of don't really get along, you know, with, but, you know, two different communities is still blended stone. This is a, 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 a gnomish, a deep, a smurf a, a city. So we, we, we kind of like want to hold, you know, and they're kind of like, uh, because they, because after we left, they took up residence and everything. They're kind of like holding their own. They just were like, hey, we just want this area. We want, want, want to be left alone. But, you know, some of us, uh, I think we should kick them out. But there are some people who think we should probably give them up because we, we got the whole thing of all those, like, uh, the Ozes and uh, also uh, the, the Ogre Mox Bane. The Ogre Mox Bane? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, uh, well, you see... Uh, the the Stoneheart Enclave. Uh, see, what I've heard is that uh, Stoneheart hopefully is closing on a solution for the threat. Uh The gnomes call, call large. That's what we call the large unclaimed area. In the or this is why we call call the northeast of the settlement Rock White as a as Earth element. Well, we call the area that's uh, northeast of the settlement rock by as uh, earth elementals go go mad whenever they go near it. And that's in relation to it. To it. Over Mox Bay. Uh, ba -ba -ba, where is that part? Sounds awful. Like, like what was kind of happening... Well, I guess no one's growing extra heads, but if they're going mad, then that might be connected to the demon lord that we heard about here. Well, thank you for your information. Now, uh, I'll toss them a uh, five silver. Why not? Uh, thank you very much. And she'll make her way back to the group. And let them know what I heard. Uh, he does explain that Ogre Mox Bane is this, like, cloud of, um, uh, like, a transparent ma magical dust that first appeared in Blaine and Stone over a year ago. It gets sentient and is found roaming that rock blight section of the settlement. Okay. That's what they refer to by Ogre Mox Bane. And just so you have spelling of Ogre Mox Bane. Ogre Mox. Okay. 
That was close. Ogremonk. Bane. What is it? Ogremonk? There's an accent on the E. I don't know how to pronounce that. And it's like a you said it's like a powder, like a magic powder that that's a, that's appeared. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'll let the group know what I heard. So how have you guys been doing? Making your way around here. I believe I'm still, like, socializing. I'm not sure. You hear... Two things. Uh, you do hear that Blinged and Sun's ghost problem is getting worse, and there are even spirits haunting the catacombs. And there are crazy Smurf Deblum back in the day, the first days of Reclamation that ooh, disappeared. So one of the scouts claim to have seen him skulking around the unrecovered er, unrecovered areas of the settlement. Oh, so it's just one how well you pronounce that word? Smurf Smurfs. Neblin. Did I just call them Smurfs? Smurfs. <laughs> There's no M, so. I mean, the first part is essentially Smurf, but instead of an M, it's a V. v? Smurf. Neblin. I feel like it would be easier. On you could just say Deep Gnome. Everyone. <laughs> okay, Deep Gnome. Just say Deep Gnome. <laughs> They're both the same thing. Deep Gnome. Um, so yeah, it's only just one deep known guy? Or is it plural? No, it's just a, the crazy from back in the first days of Reclamation. So there was like a one guy. No one's thought to like maybe do something about this guy? I mean, he was lost. They just like appeared that they seen him, but uh, that's about it. Okay. Well, thanks for your. Uh... I just walk away. <laughs> <laughs> this is a strange one. Ah, uh, he means well. He's just well. Uh, I guess. I'm I'm lost of words. I suck with words, guys. I'm sorry. Uh all right. Uh I'm gonna, when it comes to like, talking, I just suck. What is what is Holly doing? Preening. <laughs> She's in the hot springs. Probably relaxing. Yeah. Being completely antisocial. Gage. It's... Gage is, is going to do some mild, mild carousing. Oh, hey, he doesn't do too bad. And, uh, actually, uh, Syra, also roll me a charisma check. Because you actually charisma. ended up browsing a little bit. You just kind of, uh, listened for a little while until you had a, there you go. Okay. And Krad, I would like you to, uh, give me a charisma check with advantage, please. Do I ever notice Holly uh, just being antisocial? Uh, you probably, like, you all went down and, real and then you just kind of look around and just notice that Holly isn't there. 
Uh, okay. okay. It's a good night. Uh, you guys seem to have between grad ending up um, going from having conversation with uh, Tappy to eventually becoming a waiter and cook for Tappy or for a cook, not a waiter. Cook for Tappy uh, and with Syra and Lassiter carousing for a while. Uh, Engage also carousing. Uh, he does more of like a physical feats of carousing um, and uh, trying to drink some people under the table. Uh, it becomes a really friendly atmosphere. It's like party hardy atmosphere with these deep gnomes. They definitely know how to party, how to drink. Not as like heavily as any of our, our Durgar friends. Um, the noise and everything gets gets rowdy enough. The gym jars, uh, uh, having a great time. Uh, Ront is actually in a relatively good mood. Uh, Edith is, uh, or Eldith is uh, just kind of like sitting at the bar, uh, just drinking by herself. Uh, and for some reason, the uh, Prince Darendel is. Wait, do I got everybody here? Am I? I want to make sure I've got stories about what's happening in this. Who else am I? Missing? No, I that's think it. that's everyone. That's it. That's it. <laughs> everyone else has died. Well, <laughs> or run away, or know. transformed, or. <laughs> Well, you, you really don't know what happened to uh, Topsy and Turvy. Uh, Lupita was executed by Roderick. Uh, you kind of don't know what happened with Shushar. Yeah, he just bolted away. Uh, Sarah's head exploded. And Stool is off with his people. And Roderick is occupying space. Uh, Roderick is currently, um, being digested or already digested. I don't know. We don't know what happened back in Grackle's dig. He got he bored. All the rooms. <laughs> he uh, faked nope. his death. He was swallowed by a dragon. Did, did anyone actually see this? Happen? Yes, Karad did. <laughs> Darn. How can we trust Karad? Do we actually wow. know him? I mean, the handwriting of the note, that was definitely Roderick. Oh, stranger things happen. But, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, I'll remember not, that. I'll remember that. something that, that uh, uh, what's his face, Lasser thinks. Maybe. Um, um, anyway, as you're getting to the end of the night, uh, he, uh, Gage says that he got uh, a few pieces of information. What have you heard? <clears throat> as well, merchant from Grackle Stug says there are, there's an influx of surface world coins there, but nobody knows where they came from, and this Mephiblin, uh caravan. Returned from white shell mines, encountered a parade of dancing myconids uh, through their repose spores. The uh, myconids told gnomes, the gnomes about a wedding celebration, which is strange considering oh, no. that myconids don't celebrate or have weddings. Well, that... there's, there's certain ones do, if you remember. I think it, yeah. I think here it's kind of like. Um, hmm. What would you you uh, say? Um, you've kind of encountered a couple of these things. So. Only once, I think. Actually, both of these. Oh, we had a we had a third hallucination of a mic in a wedding. Never like Grove. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and... Featuring... Featuring Zuxmoy. Uh, you also uh, ran into the Surface World coin things and Grackle Stew because of the monolith the red dragon egg was found in the world stone tunnels um if i ever get back with the group i'll tell them what i heard um, i know lasser can get a bit party partied uh, he'll drink where was, he, was he wearing his amulet or not? Yeah, he always has it on. Okay, but, so everything uh, tasted like water to him. Yeah. He's not thinking. Doesn't matter. Drinks a drink at this point. Not exactly. I'd say it's getting, you guys have been kind of traveling and uh, have been out most of the day. Yeah, you're hey. Did we ever get rooms? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Where there are nice, comfortable beds. Everybody. As in. always, Sarah will get the one furthest away from Rotten Lasseter. <laughs> Oh, uh, how many rooms are there? Like, do, are we able to get our own rooms, or? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say there is. Okay. Well, There's course, no one yeah. else. You guys have the room in place, so. Bront and I will get a room, of course. Uh, stool isn't here anymore, so mm -hmm. I guess Karad would be sleeping alone. Question mark. Hey, Karad, you're always oh, welcome no. to. Okay. Nope. <laughs> last one, last one, Ron is like is the that meme of the couple at the bar start eyeball, eyeballing you and offer you a drink. <laughs> Eldith gets her own room. Prince Darendal gets his own room. Everybody gets their own room. The only the only only ones that are shared room are Bront and Laster. Uh Needless to say, uh, Laster would like you to roll me a constitution save. Oh, uh, it's safe. Ooh, 21. Roll to, roll to sex. Uh, you wear Ront out. <laughs> How the tables have turned. Um, I'm not gonna go into detail. Well, of course, there's no um. I don't. I don't know how to say that in YouTube only ways. We're rated R. It's fine. <laughs> no. Uh. You don't have uh, to be too graphic. Yeah, of course we. Uh, there's no. Penetration involved, of course. Uh, Ron is saving himself until we get up there. I guess I don't know. That's what he said, at least. Little do you know, orcs have <laughs> relentless endurance. I, I, I don't. I don't think he's actually doing that. Uh, oh, then whatever. Yeah. Um, needless to say, any time that he's. Uh, Gotten down with you. Uh, it has been quite rough, and he definitely has come. Okay. Um, 
I'll I'll let him take the lead. However, uh, he just is like for some reason he's just really tired. So right. he kind of like just has you do everything. Being a lazy top. <laughs> okay, that's my night. Okay. Y'all wake up. At some point, I'll sneak out and get a drink. I'll, I'll take my uh, amulet off while doing okay, so. Me, uh, uh, I'm going to just keep the con safe. Your head aches, uh, but you do enjoy the Dark Lake Stout for the second and, time? Maybe the first time? I'll keep the necklace off until the next morning. Or whatever we assume is the next uh time. yeah uh, you, you take it off you get a drink you but you're starting the pain you just want to like pass out go back to your room uh i'm assuming strip off and then just kind of plop into uh, onto ront yep. uh, fall asleep uh you wake up um uh, lasser you are awfully thirsty uh, meaning thirsty for water. Specifically, you feel dehydrated. Uh, I'll go back downstairs. Uh, is anyone awake? Any else? Anyone else awake? Mm -hmm. Everybody gradually wakes up. Uh, I won't have my armor on. I'll just have like you know shirt pants and i'll sit down at the bar and Darndall ask enjoys, for water uh, you you do pass uh darren doll and eldis who uh seem to be heading towards the hot springs enjoy that this morning oh are y'all going to the springs no they're going to take a bath but if i join oh absolutely who was this Cyron. again? Eldis and Eldis and Darendel. So big fuzzy guy and a uh, dwarven chick. Um, I'll take my drink of water with me if possible. Sure. And Syra will join them too, because as she she's feeling a little clammy, you know, all this adventuring. Yeah, there are two. So there is like. They do have the gender binary binary split off because they're just old fogies. Although you're the only ones there, so who's going to know? Right. Who's to go to one side or the other? We've been adventuring with each other with one another for a while now. If we haven't <laughs> seen each other's books. You all just go into the same place. Um, it is very nice. I'd like to take back something. I don't take out. I don't put my necklace amulet back on until like we're getting ready to go take care of business. So That's good. my amulet would be with my stuff. Yeah, you still have quite the headache, feeling dehydrated and yeah. and such, but you're fine. Otherwise. You have one of the world's worst hangovers, but it's not too bad that you're going to fall over or pass out or anything. It's, it's best to get rid of it now than have to deal with it later. Correct. Um, yeah, I'm down there already, probably getting faded up. Just can and... I drink? Yeah, you drink. Yeah. We had like you under a... the table. <laughs> How about uh, Gage and Holly? Are they around? Gage probably woke up, uh, went to the bath uh, too, but he did more of just the kind of like rinsing, washing himself off, and then he left. He didn't like to stick around to to, to relax or anything in it. 
goes goes back to his room, puts on puts on his armor, and uh, goes down and has breakfast. So, well, Singh has, I guess, most of us are together. Uh, it seems like there's lots of lots going on around around this place. A lot of uh, issues. Maybe we can jump on to earn the town's favor and get out of here. Hopefully, uh, uh, that uh, crazy guy seems interesting. Maybe easy. But then again, maybe we should get rid of take care of something serious. Maybe that will um, earn us more favor quickly, quicker. I was thinking about the uh, Myconids. It seems like they're making their way around here. That could be problems. Especially if they start adding to their uh, undead numbers. <laughs> or whatever they were, really. Oh, I specifically leave out the whole ghost stuff. I, I don't bring that up at all. At all. Uh, in my opinion, I think the Myconids are kind of a bigger threat. Definitely. What do you think, Karad? Both seem Well, let's put it to a vote then. Who who would like to go look into the Myconids and who wants to look into the crazy man? Let's take care of the uh, my kittens. Okay. Um. I so guess once after... we get get showered, dressed, and eaten, or eat, you're not eaten. <laughs> uh, yeah. Are so you going back uh, to the salt mine, Prince Darendil? Darren. Dell, he mm -hmm. is one of those. Uh, it's a quite off. Well, therapy. he's in. Uh, according to him, he's in all. That's been transformed into a quite off. Um, <laughs> Prince. Um, so what kind of? If you don't mind me asking, what uh kind of elf were you? No, it was in the woods, so I'm assuming you're a wood elf. Um, do you remember your life back then? I do remember some of it. It was kind of vague familiarity. I suspect that uh, being in this form for so long has muddled my memory. What's your earliest memory? Kind of a full memory of an event... Being captured by the Distrow. So, you don't really have any memory of you actually being an elf? No, but I know it. I'm sure of it. What is this, uh... Would you say this is a feeling that you have? Or yes. is something I would that say you that. Have? How would you describe this Yes, I know. I know, what, I know my name. I am Prince Darendel. Cool. Guy's crazy. <laughs> I don't believe him at all. I'm sorry. No, I uh, Lassiter believes him, but he also believes that he believes whatever he's saying. <laughs> oh, he's a gold elf. Excuse me. Just off his rockers. All right. Well, uh, let's let's uh, finish up here and get going. 
So yes, we will make our way towards the uh, the dancing mic in it issue. All right, the, so you're going to go out of the city? Yep, as long as they let us back in, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you remember you actually, uh, Jim Jar will remind you, well, the white shell mine, we, that was the salt mine we went through. I didn't see no mic and heads around there. It was kept up uh, tip shot, tip top shape. Did um, this might have happened whatever. a while ago? Didn't 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 you mention something about running to similar type of mic and heads down in the the those tunnels and grackles, Duke? Yeah, yeah. We we had a shared vision of a of a mic and head wedding led by one of the other demon lords. Well, well, yeah, that was in the like Grove, but the the Mykonids that they were referring to here about the wedding thing, uh, there were dancing Mykonids. We you also ran into some dancing Mykonids down the the tunnels down in Grackle Street, right? That's I was right. right there. I was in the inn, but you told us about it. So maybe they go traveling around. Or they're like uh, town criers or something. Well, I still think it's worth AKA, looking into. That was really that was really a story hook for getting into going to Endeavor Light Grove. So, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Move on. Okay, uh, I'm just saying uh, you're gonna go out there and not find anything. What? Just be like, I don't think we need to go. Out so the next thing, crazy uh, gnome, eat gnome. Um, okay. What do I remember about that? Uh, a deep gnome caravan returning from white shell mines encountered a... Wait. Shit. Sorry. Wrong one. There was a crazy deep gnome back in the first days of reclamation? Who disappeared. Reclamation. Reclamation. Mm-hmm. Some of the scouts claim to have seen him skulking around the unrecovered areas of the settlement. So we need to find out what's unrecovered? Maybe? Do we know what's unrecovered? Basically, it's the north portion of the city, essentially. Over here. And the, and, and the uh, south there, uh, uh, the southwest too, and the southwest. So, yeah, kind of like basically, kind of it's kind of like a curve around the top of the map down to the right side of the map, all the way down south. Maybe southwest was also where those uh, where people were. But um, yeah, I'm including those as in unrecovered because they're not part of the. Yeah. Well, the way they made it sound, they're kind of living their own little community, and then so far it's not disrupting anyone's time, other than a few people grumbling about it. But do I start moving us? Sure. Do we know where we're going? I'm going north to look for the crazy man. North, northwest. Just let me know when I need to stop. Uh, when? Mm. Whoops. Traveled through here before. Traveling through some of the residential caves. Can we go through here? Um, that is a lot of piquet, I think. Yeah, it's fortified with barricades and defended by eight deep gnomes and four cave badgers. You don't see any uh, earth elementals for, uh, for security or anything. Do they look friendly? Oh, this is where you learned about the Medusa. Okay. Ah, see, I remember. I, I knew I heard something about one. Yep. 
Uh, like, I'm crazy, but... <laughs> yeah, the leader of the guard, uh, Sark Axe Barrel, had warned you about the... Uh... Of a wandering Medusa somewhere. Uh, he does mention that if you do decide to explore, he offers payment of uh, 50 gold pieces uh, for each uh, each person uh, for any useful information. Plus, if uh, you, you do bring back proof that the Medusa is dead, he will offer you a thousand gold pieces. Mm. Will they let us through? A diamond worth a thousand gold pieces, I should say. Not three out three hundred gold pieces. Fifty gold pieces per the character for useful information, plus a diamond worth one thousand gold pieces if you bring back proof that the Medusa is dead. One thousand. Okay. I heard a hundred. Who wants to go Medusa hunting? <laughs> yeah, kind of. But um, I think Wynn said that he doesn't have that up yet. No, I, I just didn't remember where you guys had heard about a Medusa until we ran across this. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. I told you about the Medusa here. <laughs> this is where I told you about the Medusa. Well, if that, if that seems more important, then, yeah, let's do that. Well, they're all important. Which one will give us more favor? I would I'm think thinking. I would think the Medusa problem. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do we have any information on the Medusa? That's the thing. Is they want? Is they want oh. information? Okay. They want information, so we need to go exploring for yeah. it. Uh, okay. Where was the last known location or incident? Where have people been attacked recently or turned to stone? Uh, yeah, they, they're in the rock light section, which is right behind these doors. And he points to the doors right behind him. Will you let us through? If you're willing to. Thank you. That That's, that's what we want. Yeah. <laughs> Look towards the rest of our group. Everybody I'm else just agree. saying, you've been warned! <laughs> Karad, do you... Do you think we're up to the challenge? I have I mean, no idea what a Medusa is. Yeah, me neither. Uh, actually, do I? I don't okay. know. That's well, what my well, intelligence man. check was. Or... I was did a raw intelligence check. Yeah, roll me a uh, Medusa. I would say... Thing, huh? If it's something specifically down here, then oh, no. no, I wouldn't. Yeah, last but... round you probably... No, no, no. Medusas weren't specifically for for down in the Underdark. Oh. Uh, but let's see. Do I have a... No one can roll. Medusa. Arcana or Intelligence. Yeah. Arcana. Let's see Arcana. Uh, so got uh, Laster and Syra, I would say say would would know what Medusa Medusa was. See if I've got lore that I can include here. Pretty late. Uh, as deadly as they are, ravishing uh, serpent headed Medusas offer. Off suffer a mortal curse brought on by their vanity. They lurk in quiet exile among the tumbled ruins of former lives surrounded by petrified remains of past admirers and would-be heroes. Okay, so what I'm gathering from this mission is that uh, we don't exactly have to fight this thing. We just have to gather information. Uh bonus if we kill it, right? Uh, 
also, I think we're going into unclaimed area. So we could be doing two missions at once. Yeah. All right. So, Just remember, no so, one Earth Elemental. So, I'm sorry, flop. What do you, I heard Earth Element. Earth Elemental. Yeah, oh, just, just don't forget, no Earth Elementals. Ooh. No harming Earth Elementals. No, no cast, no even summoning them. Yeah, didn't I get like a rock thing that I can smash on the ground and summon an A mm -hmm. elemental? I don't know if it was an Earth elemental. I don't know. Okay. Do you? Look at your inventory. I'm looking for it. And I will also explain to Karad what a Medusa is so he understands what we're going after. Yeah, that seems like a problem. Are you up to the task? Yeah. All right. Don't want to do anything. Now that we're all. Well, we know that their gaze will turn us to stone. Um, what if we check out our new friend at the magic shop who will give us a discount on items? Okay. Sounds like a plan. I'll double back to our. Our shop merchant friend. Kazook has a whole bunch of gems in front of him. Where was that? It was kind of close to where we fought the, uh, uh, the up oozes. Here, up here, this... here, let me let me help you with that. Uh, yeah, I think... Hmm? Mm -hmm. Layer, map layer, they're number seven. Lucky number seven. That is uh, the bazaar. Is it there? <clears throat> There's a bunch of gems at his stall. Yeah, you're back. Um, what can I do for you? Ah, Gazook, my friend. We were. We were interested in some wares you might you might have here, uh, something that could perhaps shield our eyes from the gaze of, of a Medusa. Have we tried a mirror? Well, that would certainly help us here around the corners. But yeah, uh, unfortunately, I don't have. A, well, I mean, if the, the Medusa looks into a mirror and sees themselves. You don't need anything magic for that. Tino over there might be able to help you uh, procure a mirror. I don't think it needs to be anything big. It just needs the Medusa has to be able to look in it. Well, how about in case of accidental turning to stone? Do you have anything that could help with that? Uh, petrification. Petrification. Um, 
Uh, sadly, I don't have anything for that. Okay, well, since we're well, here, I, just... Here, I got a great idea. Do any of you guys know how to do a greater restoration? Looks towards Lassiter. <laughs> no. I do not. I am not uh, that... I know that's the restoration. Yeah, that didn't do it. Yeah. Sorry. I was let the team down. I was just going to say, if uh, any of you need it, I know it requires some components of diamonds. I could definitely supply you with that. Uh, let me take a look at something else here. Uh, da -da -da. Ah! Aha! Uh -huh. I did have some! And he comes up and he, he uh, puts a box on top and he lifts up the lid and inside are, are two vials of a uh, purplish liquid. This huh? is basilisk blood. And what is very this doing, hard my to friend? Be, very hard to procure. Which, even with your discount, which I think it was, what, 20%? Yeah, 20 or 25. Which can still cost you a pretty penny. I'll definitely wrap the two up. Normally, 1,000 gold pieces. For you, seven fifty. And what does it do? Well, it's basilisk blood. If somebody gets petri petrified, we don't petrify them. Mm -hmm. From my Excel. understanding, it works the same whether it's a basilisk or a Medusa or some other petrification. Let's see. We have enough. Yeah, we do. Just, well, especially with the platinums too. Yeah. Yeah. We have a total of one thousand seven hundred forty-three gold. Do you want to invest in in one of those in case one of us gets petrified? So for the two vials. And with two vials. Does sound like a good idea. I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because if that happens, then none of us can do anything about it. <laughs> like, well, <laughs> that happens. <laughs> Alright, sold. And, because I'm a good sport, he also uh, pops a Another gem on to on top of it. Uh, I just need to pick some here. He puts a uh, jade gem in amongst it. It's like, and uh, because you're so pretty, I also give you this. This is a spell gem of greater restoration. Ooh. I will hand that over to Lassiter. I'll hold on to the uh, Basilisk blood so that I can go invisible. Sounds good. I feel it would just be easier to... And Sarah will take the vials and give it to Karev, and he will give the gem to Lassiter. I will take the gem. And he'll turn back and 
the real gem is you, my friend. And she'll give a little a little peck on his cheek. Oh. He he blushes. Helps oh. you. All right. That's nice. I was trying to see if there's an actual item for Basic's blood, and I found blood well vials for sorcerers that allow them when they deal with a hit die to get sorcery points back. Oh, nice. And it's, it can be a spell focus, and it's a plus one, like it has grades for like plus one, plus two, plus three for attacks and saving throws. Oh, we're just gonna do some vials. That pack. Hey, is there an item for the spell gem? Yeah, it's a spell gem jade. Spell space gem, by the way. Belgium J. Mm hmm. Uh, and then just make a note that it slows the restoration. Because it's, it's like a, it, it can hold up to a fifth level spell. So just have a note that that's what, the, what that's what that is. Uh, do we know the level of, oh, wait. Never. Fifth level. Oh, do, uh, I don't think Greater Restoration do? It's on the Cleric spell list. Yeah. Uh, I was saying, um, Greater Restoration, is that a 5th level spell? Yes. Yep. Okay. Which is why I gave you a jade. Felt it. Okay. Nope. All right, gang. Let's make our way to the door then. Oh, let's actually let's go to the stall next door and get some mirrors. Do we know that the mirror thing will work? Oh, so our friend just told us about it. Okay. Let's trust your friend. It was 750. 750 for the uh, bassless blood vials. And then he just kind of threw in a jade greater restoration gem. And the mirrors uh, actually are very inexpensive. They're only like, like, uh, they've got some like compact esque type things. Basically, some you can easily like pocket, but it has a covering to keep it protected and just kind of like open it. Hand mirrors. They even have have some that are like big, you know, like that, regular hand mirrors. Mm -hmm. But they're only like I'll take one. Two silver pieces each. Yeah, I I say we all take one just to protect ourselves and look. So we don't look directly at the Medusa. So ten silver pieces taken out. So one, yeah, or one gold, or whatever it is. Well, we have we have like fifty silver pieces, thirty four copper pieces. So it's just like use up what we got. <laughs> All right, now. <laughs> now that we have our mirrors, <laughs> now let's go 
peruse the uh, potential Medusa lair. Steel mirror. All right, let's go back to the doors then. Are they still letting us through? Yeah, they'll let you through. All right. I'm using the ten as an indicator of where you entered. And I will try the other door. No resistance. All right. just... It's a little stuck. A little bit of a resistance. <sighs> You enter into kind of a dark, unlit cavern. I'll cast light on um, Holly's sword axe. Axe. And decide where we're going, left or right. Um, I'm going to pull out my mirror and peek around corners. That's smart. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> what is that? Disadvantage on perception? To, to the right. To your left, uh, you see uh, a cavern which leads to a cave-in. To your right, you see a more open area. You hear the dripping of water. Every step echoes across walls beyond your circle of light. Air is cold and damp. You hear a waterfall somewhere in the blackness, along with faint, faint echoes of battle. Echoes of battle. Echo, echo. Um, Which way was the battling coming from? The right. right. So, if if the others aren't aware, I'll I'll tell them. I, I think I hear. I think I hear some sort of battle happening nearby. Um, I'd like to try and stealth. As we make our way towards the noise. Thank you, Snake. If I may. Which way are you going, again? I'm sorry. Right. To the right, towards the noise. Okay. I was trying to stealth. So. Okay. Go ahead and roll a stealth trick. 25. You, both Lasser and Syra, just... <laughs> Very quiet. Uh, Karad makes a crunching noise with his feet. Not good at this. Well, that's why you can go invisible. <laughs> to make up for it. Uh, Gage is, is strangely silent in his heavy IV armor. <laughs> Right, let's make our way stealthily to the right. Okay. Gonna go around the pond or go through it? Probably better considering, around. Okay. Considering the ponds have possible jellies in them, or oozes. Can I see my reflection? In the... Uh, thingy. with the light? Yes. <laughs> I'll, uh, just... It's very dark. It's not, it's not clear, but or it, you see, there's a reflection, but it's not like a clear reflection. How long have we been in the underdark? Uh, no. months. My hair is too long. long. <laughs> All my life. Uh. And 
my hair probably has grown a bit. So it's to all stuffy. <laughs> um. Okay. There's a door, but that would be going back to mm -hmm. safety? Question mark. Uh, from where we're standing now, where are those sounds of battle coming from? Uh, the echoes have become more distant. Those originating from somewhere else. Oh. Uh, um, Sarah, are you sure we came the right way? I thought they are coming from this direction. Want to turn back? Try the other way? Uh, how about we go... Hmm. Um, to kind of help with this, uh, I need one, two, four, five. Uh, I need somebody to roll me a d5. Someone that knows how to do the typey scene. Would, yeah. Oh. So it's slash r. Not r slash. There we go. There we go. Four. Four slash. All right. So I need everybody to now roll me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, oh no. Ooh. Oh, oh no. I mean, it's not worse than a five. That's, you have plus eight or plus nine. <laughs> <laughs> that shitty rolls. Gage is rolling pretty well today. Uh, Karad, Lasseter, Syrah, and Tali. Oh, I rolled mine. I got a nat 1, but a 10. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. All right, uh, DC was 13. So. Damn. Sorry, Syrah. Lasser. Syrah. Holly. Oh. You are now all frightened as a ghost appears with a horrifying visage. Well, that didn't... That's not exactly ghost. what I wanted. Hey, so... One of my things, one of Lasser's things is that he's afraid of ghosts, or undead specifically. Um, so, I don't know if that matters or not. Crad, you are also frightened. A frightened target can repeat the same thing. The target saving throw is successful. So, it just says frightened. But you have disadvantage on attack rolls while the source of its fear is within your sight. Can't willingly move closer. That's it. That's all. Okay. But, Krad, I need you to roll me a d4. Uh, you you age 30 years. Oh. What? what? Krad is suddenly 30 years older. How does that show on dwarves? You're not a dwarf, are you? You are. He, he's dwarvish. He's a dark dwarf. No dwarf. Does his muscle tone stay the same? I mean, dwarves live a long time, so 30 years probably isn't that much. Yeah, that, that's why I was saying. You're muted. I'm only I'm only a hundred now, so that's they can live up to three. Dwarfs. They can live up to three hundred and fifty. All right, then uh, against Holly, uh, does a sixteen hit Holly? Just barely. All right. Do we know why he aged? Uh, yeah, because the ghosters appeared and screamed 
his horrifying visage. Uh, Holly takes um, thir- uh, 18 points of necrotic damage. Because I, lo- I rolled so low it happened. Okay. Now, I was wondering why specifically. Yeah. Yeah, Elders see, Blast? Let's see... What else? Yeah, go ahead. I wish I could, like, have a hotkey. Just for Elders 24. Okay, that will hit. We're gonna roll damage. 7. Okay. Right. It takes seven points of damage. You go, the ghost shouts. No, you, you, before you do that. Okay. Ghost shout, shouts, they're coming. And then one, one must hide. It then flees into, it looks like a, one of the old barrows. This looks to be like a residential district that people haven't been in. It's coming. Or they're coming? He said, they are coming. Everyone must hide. Or then flee. Um, I turn um, out <laughs> I'm going to hide. <laughs> Find somewhere to stealth again. I'm it's supposed just... to hide. I'm scared right now, so I'm going to hide. <laughs> just us. That's way possible. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stealth again. 27. Gage follows. Follows the ghost where you went. Who? And disappears oh. into the barrel. Burrow. I mean, right now, you guys can move wherever you want because you don't see the ghost right now. Who is directly beside me? Or oh, would be? Maybe Holly, because... Kred's invisible, and I'm I'm stealth behind something I can find cover from. Gage um, might be there. I will use damn invisibility. Can I cast a higher level? No, I can. Yes, I can. Um, yeah, me and um, let's say Holly will be go invisible. Using my third level spell slot. Unless I don't. Uh, Gage walks into to the burrow where the ghost fled to. Did we put our our tokens on the map? No, this is kind of no. a fear of the mind sort of situation, so I mean, don't worry about that. We're using Jim Jar as like a, a, a group placement, general placement. Which direction did Gage and the ghost go? He, he went into one of the old barrows. Burrows. Well, this is a residential the... district, so there's a bunch of like housing nooks and crannies. Okay. Oh, damn! Then, okay. Um, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna say after a moment of the ghost appearing, screaming and threatening me, and getting over it, seeing Gage run and run down, I'll go off, go after him, follow. Uh, 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 it, as it took you so long, Gage had enough time to get into the burrow, and he's currently kneeling by uh, what looks to be skeletal remains of a. Dome. Hey. Hey, uh, well, what you find? Uh, the ghost disappeared as soon as it got in, got in here. Something tells me this was his final resting place. He looks at the bones. Did it, did it say anything else to you? No, I just bleed into here and disappear. 
Um, investigate the area. Uh, sure, you do see that uh, the skeleton appears to be reaching under the stone bed that's in the chamber. Alright. Um, if I knew there were uh, houses, I probably wouldn't have used invisibility. So, um, I don't mind if that sticks, but... Well, yeah. That's okay. I would yeah, I would definitely say that we're not here. Plus, we're almost done here, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Uh, you do notice underneath the bed, you do see, see find a uh, hidden compartment in the floor. I'll call everyone else's attention. Uh, I think I, I might have found something, guys. Does it, does it uh, have anything to do with the dead? Seems like a hidden compartment. And let's see. Yeah, I will. I'll push it. All right. You open the compartment and you find a rotted pouch. Looking inside, Ooh. you see uh, six gems and a potion vial. Picking up the vial, it feels like something's in there, but you don't see anything. Well, this is interesting. We'll turn and open up the like it it it, it smells a little rank, but <laughs> seems like there's some good stuff in here. And she'll show the gems and what's I in guess the, before we hmm? what's in the potion jar vial? Kind of swirl it around in her hands like. It, feel, it looks like there's nothing there, but it feels like something's sloshing around. And I guess 10 minutes pass and, and identify. Right. It's a potion of invisibility. Alright. I will make note that I am there with them. So they know I'm there, they just can't see me. <laughs> And Gage and I are, are not invisible. He's, you know, yeah. Okay. So, I guess with that, do you want to call it for the evening? Yep. That's a good one. I'll pick it up in area number 17. Okay. I'm my player. All right, everybody, you have a good night. And night. Uh, thank you all for watching who are watching. We'll be back in two weeks. Two weeks. See you, uh, Spuddy, and win tomorrow. Yep. Two weeks. Hopefully.